Lenz's Law. And all this is, is the meaning of the negative sign in Faraday's Law. So this gives us, here's our EMF, is negative d phi b d t, or if you're just getting the average value, or if you're in the AP Physics 2 class, the average EMF is negative delta phi b over delta t. And this is our very last right-hand rule. Yay! And it's going to take some practice, without a doubt. Um, the idea, the basic idea of this is that the induced EMF tries to push current so that the magnetic flux will not change. Magnetic flux is kind of like mass. Once you get a mass going, it wants to stay going. Magnetic flux is the same way. Nature abhors a change. If the magnetic flux is going and you try to change it, nature's going to say, I don't want that to change. I'm going to do everything in my power to keep that magnetic flux the same. Now, unfortunately, it will fail, just like unless you find a uh, way to make things frictionless, uh, will fail in keeping a mass going because it will, you know, due to friction, it will eventually stop. Uh, the magnetic flux will eventually stop, again, due to friction in our, in our uh, wire. Uh, but uh, we can actually, uh, in a superconductor, you can just keep the magnetic flux going. Lenz's law is this. Any induced current opposes any change in magnetic flux. Induced current will oppose any change in magnetic flux. Current is not always induced. What is one reason that I could take a magnet and move it back and forth and there'd be no current induced? Let me go get a magnet so I can do this. There's no conductor. Yeah, there's no conductor. I'm not going to get any current. So, but here's what I will get. Here's my magnet. Here's a question. I move this magnet back and forth right here in space. Do I get an electric field? Thumb up if yes, thumb down if no. I'm moving my magnet back and forth. I am changing the flux through some imaginary loop right here. Do I get an electric field? Thumb up if yes, thumb down if no. Go for it. Yes, there's an electric field. Notice that uh, you don't need a current to have an electric field. There's an electric field there. It's just not moving any charges. Do I get an EMF? This way, move that way. Here's my coil. My, by the way, my, uh, we'll, as we'll figure out, the, the electric field curls around in a circle. Do I get an EMF? Thumb up if yes, thumb down if no. Hint, the, do I get an electric field? Yeah. Could I integrate that electric field over some loop, that, even if there's no wire there? Sure. Uh, it's, uh, it's a loop, but it's not a Gaussian loop. It's uh, neither an Amperian loop. It's just, I don't even think we have a name for that, but it's a, uh, a loop in space that this electric field is going around. Yes, you do get an EMF. EMF does nothing for you unless you have what present? A conductor. Then it will create current. So a changing magnetic flux, just doing this, does create an electric field. And it does create an EMF. It only creates a current if there's a conductor there. Here's what I got. I've got a coil right here. Sorry, uh, and it, it could just be a loop in space, but I happen to have a coil of wire right here. And what I'm doing is I'm moving my north-facing magnet towards it. And we're going to look at this from over here. We're going to view it from this way, and this is what I have right here. So my first situation is I've got these represent the magnetic field lines. Okay? Then I move it closer, which means take a look at the way the magnetic field of this magnet is set up. Do I get more or less magnetic field lines when I move this closer, going through that loop? When I move the magnet closer, do I get more or less magnetic field lines puncturing that loop? You get more, it looks like this. Okay, so here's what we do with our right hand rule, and this is the first step. You start with your thumb pointed in the direction of the initial magnetic field, but really we're interested in the magnetic flux. So keep in mind that uh, the magnetic flux is what matters, but for the direction of your thumb, you can start with the magnetic field direction. Flux is a scalar, it doesn't have direction, but we're going to use the magnetic field for the direction of our thumb. So now it's going to be increasing from here, from this thing right here, 
this going to this, notice that the amount of flux, the number of magnetic field lines increases. So we've got to start with our thumb like this, and then, or actually for this, it's going to be out towards you. So it's going to be like that. And then you make it longer because there's more flux. The length of your thumb represents the magnitude of the flux. So again, starting short because it's a low flux and it's pointed towards you because that's the way the magnetic field is. Make the thumb long because it gets to a higher flux. It's still pointing towards you though. The next thing we got to do is figure out what is the direction of the change in flux. So to figure that out, all you got to do with this awesome right hand rule is watch your thumb. If it goes from this to this, which way was the velocity of your thumb as it was moving? From short to long in that direction, which way is the change point in that direction right now with your thumb? Which way is the change? It is towards you. Notice that we've got short, long. That change, the velocity was towards you. So that's the first thing you got to know. Which way is the flux changing? It's getting bigger towards you. The next thing you got to do is, here's where Lenz's Law kicks in. So notice the way I've shown it right here on this thing. It goes from short to longer, and that means the change is that way. So uh, B is increasing for you guys out of the page there. Now, Lenz's Law says nature doesn't want the flux to change, so it will do everything it can to try to oppose that change. Just like a mass, nature tries to oppose any changes in velocity. That's what inertia is. It's just resistance to change in velocity. So nature is going to try to induce a current. Here's the direction of our change. Nature is going to try to produce a flux that is pointed the opposite way. So what you do is you once you figure out the direction of the change, and be careful, it's not the direction of the field. It's the direction of the change. Once you figure out that, by looking at which way your thumb is moving, nature's gonna try to oppose that change, so you flip it to the opposite direction as the direction of the change. So it was towards you, so we gotta flip it to away from you, towards the screen. Then we can use our coil right hand rule. If I wanna create a magnetic flux that's towards, uh, for this it'll be into the page, which way would the current have to curl around to do that? Notice it's going to be like this for you guys. That is clockwise. I'm getting for you guys. Yeah. That's clockwise. So let's take that again. I'm going to take the whole process again. You start off, and I can see the problem is a lot of you guys never flipped, never did your flip. So here's the whole thing again. You start with the magnetic field. It's it's a small amount pointing towards you. So your thumb is short. Then it gets longer towards you still. Watch your thumb and see which way it moves. Which way did your thumb move? Towards you. Towards you. Nature doesn't want that change to happen, so it will try to create a flux in the opposite direction as the change, which is away from you, and then you curl your fingers in a direction that will support that kind of magnetic field or flux, which is around for you guys clockwise. That will be the direction of the current. The current will be clockwise because, according to Lenz, the induced current will produce a magnetic field that opposes any change in the external B field's flux. So now let's predict, using this law, what will happen if the magnet is withdrawn. So here is our magnet being withdrawn. And uh, so let's take a look at this. So same magnet, but being pulled away. So let's start off with, if this is the north end of our magnet right there, Here's north. Before I withdraw the magnet, which way is the magnetic flux? Again, magnetic flux is a scalar, but we can use the magnetic field direction to help us. Magnetic field direction is that way through there, right? All these lines going through there like that. So here's the thing. we got to kind of think ahead. Is our flux going to get bigger or smaller when I withdraw the magnet? Smaller. It's going to get smaller, so we have to start out with our thumb long. Thumb is long this way pointing towards you. Still pointing towards you because the north end is it's like this. This is our situation that we start with right here. So then the magnetic flux becomes this, it becomes less. Then 
we've got to make it less magnitude, like that. You move your thumb, making it shorter, gives it, makes it less magnitude. Now here's the critical thing, and this is why you don't want to confuse the direction of the magnetic field with the direction of the change. Both this magnetic field, the long version, and the short version, those are both towards you. But which way is the change? Watch your thumb move. You literally, by physically doing this, you can get the clue. You see your thumb move. Your thumb is moving that away. It's away from you. So this points, the change points into the page. Right? So now, and don't forget this step, the change points into the page. Does nature like that change? Nature doesn't like a change in flux any more than it likes a change in velocity. So it will oppose that change, and that's the important flip. That's the negative in the negative dphi dt. You oppose it, and then you can use your coil right-hand rule to figure out, hey, which way would current have to flow to get that magnetic flux that we want to impose on that to keep the change minimized. So it would have to be counterclockwise in that example.